In this mini lecture we will continue discussing spectroscopy and in particular we will discuss how atoms and light interact and how this creates different types of spectra especially the emission line and absorption line spectra. Before we can discuss the interactions of light and atoms let's review what an atom is. So here's a cartoon of an atom on the right and it shows how much empty space there is in an atom. If the nucleus of an atom, that's the center of the atom, were the size of a grape seed, and I don't know why they chose grape seed. I've rarely seen grape seeds. The grapes that I eat these days are seedless, but a grape seed is a little smaller than an apple seed. If the nucleus of the atom were the size of an apple seed, the electron cloud of the atom, the outer part of the atom, would be three or four football fields across. And so if you imagine an apple seed in the middle of a football field and then string four football fields together, how much empty space there would be there. Atoms are mostly empty space. In the nucleus of the atom, there are two types of particles. Protons. Protons have a positive electric charge. Neutrons have no electric charge. And the protons and neutrons both reside in the nucleus of the atom. Electrons have a negative electric charge and electrons reside outside the nucleus in a cloud around the atom. Now uh, you may have seen pictures that seem to show electrons orbiting the nucleus. They don't technically do that, but you can think of it that way. Uh, the true description of what an electron does around an atom requires quantum mechanics and it's frankly very weird. Uh, a couple of facts to keep in mind. Protons and neutrons each are 1800 times more massive than the electron so you can say for all intents and purposes all the mass of an atom is in the nucleus in that apple seed in the middle of the football field and the entire nucleus of the atom is extraordinarily small compared with the electron cloud and it's very similar to the size of the Sun compared with that of the whole solar system we also need to go a little further in our discussion about light. Uh, last week we talked about light having properties of a wave. Light also has properties of a particle. A particle is just a small solid object. You can think of it like a, uh, a bowling ball or a billiard ball. How can light be both something that's a long train of waves and this little individual particle? The details require an understanding of quantum mechanics, which is way beyond what we're going to do in this course. But you can think of a photon as like a small packet of a wave. And a continuous light beam is a bunch of these packets, a bunch of individual photons coming in together. So a photon is the smallest possible unit of light. We can't subdivide a photon. This little packet of waves is the smallest quantum of light we can have. Because this photon can be thought of like a wave packet, we can still talk about the photon in terms of its wavelength, its frequency, its energy, even its color, just because the photon nature of light and the wave nature of light are interchangeable. For this discussion on how light interacts with atoms, it's often helpful to think of light as a photon. Now the electron in an atom can only reside at certain orbits which are often called energy levels. So imagine that you want to get to the roof of a house. To get to the roof of the house you need to climb a ladder and the ladder has unique steps and you can only climb on those unique steps. If you try and step in between two rungs of a ladder you are very likely to fall down. Likewise, an electron has very unique energy levels it can be at, and the electron can never be between energy levels. It has to step from one to the other, or it's often called a quantum leap from one energy level to another energy level. And it cannot be located in between. So the lowest rung, the lowest energy level in an atom is called the ground state. And above that, these are often called excited states. So the second energy level would be called the first excited state. The third energy level would be called the second excited state. Aren't you confused yet? I certainly am. Uh, I will try to refer to the lowest level as the ground state and the second level as the second energy level, third level as the third energy level, and so on. Electrons are, at their heart, very lazy 
particles. They love to sit at the ground state. They do not like to go to the higher energy levels. So if you want to get an electron to a different energy level, you have to give it that energy. And the way we give an electron the energy so it can go to a higher level is with photons. So a photon, that wave packet, carries a certain amount of energy. And if that amount of energy exactly equals the amount of energy an electron needs to go to another energy level, there's a good chance it will absorb that photon and jump up. Now, because all that energy has gone to the electron, the photon is gone. It no longer exists. Energy of the photon must be exactly equal to the change in electron energy, or the electron doesn't even see it. So the example on the left is the cartoon atom we saw in the previous case where the blue photon has just the right energy to cause the electron to jump to the second level. But on the right we have a red photon coming through. Red light is less energetic than blue light so the red photon does not have enough energy to get the electron anywhere. It can't go to any of the other energy levels and so it will just sit there and allow the red photon to pass right on by. Now if the electron is not in the ground state, if it's already in an excited state for whatever reason, and the photon comes by, uh, the allowed transitions may change. So here you see in this cartoon, on the left, that same blue photon that was good enough to get the electron from the ground state to the second level, now if we gave that energy to the electron it would end up in between the third and the fourth levels. In between levels is not allowed, so the electron will allow that photon to pass right on by. In this case the energy of the red photon is exactly right to cause the electron to jump from the second level to the third level so the electron will absorb that photon. The photon will cease to exist. The electron now has more energy and it goes up to the third energy level. Now the further apart two energy levels are the more energy you need to cause the electron to do the jump. So the top left cartoon is the same cartoon we've been starting with. Electron in the ground state, a blue photon comes by and that's just enough energy to get it to the second energy level and so it will jump to the second level. On the top right we have in this case an orange photon, a red photon on the previous slide which had sufficient energy to cause the electron to jump from the second to the third level. In this cartoon you see that the second and third levels are closer together than the ground state and the second level, the first and second levels, and so you don't need as energetic of a photon. You can use an orange or a red photon to cause the electron to jump from the second to the third level. In the bottom left cartoon, this is the same atom that needed a blue photon to go from the ground state to the first excited level. But suppose that a photon comes in that has enough energy to lift the electron from the ground state to the third energy level. Then the electron will absorb that photon and just jump completely over the second energy level and go straight to the third energy level. As long as the energy of the purple photon is exactly right for the electron to jump to the third level, it can do that. Finally, if the photon coming in has a lot of energy, in the bottom right I show an ultraviolet photon coming in, if that energy is enough to cause the electron to completely leave the atom, the electron may absorb that photon and fly off and leave the atom behind. That case is called ionization. As long as the incoming photon has enough energy to completely remove the electron, the electron will fly off of the atom. It won't be in an energy level. It'll be completely free from the atom and fly off to freedom. Remember I said a couple slides ago that electrons are lazy. They want to be in the ground state. Once we have an electron in an excited state, it will want to get rid of that extra energy and go back to the ground state. Now where does that energy go? Energy has to go somewhere and so the electron releases a photon and that photon will have the exact amount of energy that the electron needs to get rid of to jump down to the next state. So in the same cartoon atom, if we have an electron in the second energy level and it wants to drop back to the ground state, 
it will need to release a blue photon to do so. That photon can go off in any direction. I mean, earlier we showed light coming in from the left, and here it's leaving to the right, but it can leave to the top or the bottom or back to the left or even out toward us. The electron doesn't remember where it got the energy. It just knows it wants to get rid of it and sends it off in whatever direction it can think of. We now have enough understanding to explain where absorption line spectra and emission line spectra come from in terms of atoms. Let's say that we have a cloud of gas that consists of our cartoon atom and all the electrons are at ground state so it's a fairly cold cloud of gas. If we have a black body near the cloud of gas that black body will send out light at all different wavelengths. As the photons come past an atom if we have say a blue photon that has the right energy to cause the electron to jump to the first excited energy level that photon will be absorbed and the blue light now ceases to exist. Any blue light that of the right wavelength that comes into the cloud of gas will be absorbed and will not come out the other side. Likewise in the lower left that violet light that was sufficient to cause the electron to jump up to the third energy level that will also get absorbed. Recall also that if we had the electron already in the second energy level and an orange photon came by that orange photon had just the right energy to cause the electron to jump up to the third energy level. So the orange photons will also be absorbed. But red photons, low energy photons, may not have enough energy to cause any of these transitions, any of these electron jumps, and so red light can pass on through. So if we look at our cartoon of a spectrum up at the top, we see that most of the colors pass right on through because most of the colors are not the right energy to cause the electron to jump energy levels. But at the right colors, where the photons have the right energy to cause jumps, those photons have been absorbed, and so that light has disappeared from the spectrum. In the last mini lecture, we learned that emission line spectra come from clouds of gas that is excited or hot. And now we can understand where this comes from in terms of atoms. If this cloud of gas is made of our cartoon atom, and we have a bunch of electrons in the second energy level, the electrons being lazy want to get rid of that energy, so they release a blue photon of exactly the right wavelength to carry away that energy. If the, elect if the electron is in the third energy level, then there are two options for what can happen. In the upper right, we see that the electron jumps from the third energy level back to the second energy level, and we saw that that corresponds to a very specific wavelength of orange light, and so the atom will release an orange photon. Now the electron's in the second energy level, and sometime later it will drop down to the ground state and release a blue photon, as in the upper left. The other option, if we have the electron in the third energy level is that it can drop all the way down to the ground state in one big jump. We've seen in the last couple slides that for this cartoon atom that energy corresponded to a violet photon and so this electron will release a violet photon. In the lower right we see why so much of the spectrum is dark. Remember that this red wavelength that we've plotted in the last couple of slides did not have just the right energy to cause the electron to go between any two energy levels. Therefore, when the electron is going from excited states back down to the ground state, there are no transitions it can do that will release a red photon. And so we do not get this particular wavelength of red photon out of this atom. Different atoms have different energy levels. Like, let's say that the atom on the left, the cartoon we've been dealing with, is hydrogen, which has one electron. It may have this set of energy levels. Helium on the right will have a different set, and it has a different set for two reasons. One, helium has two protons instead of just one of the hydrogen. And second, helium has two electrons that are both jumping around. So a helium spectrum will have emission lines and absorption lines at a different wavelength than the hydrogen spectrum. Atoms with more than one electron, the electrons do not share photons. They don't split it up among themselves. So in this cartoon of a helium atom, the purple photon comes in and is sufficient to allow the 
one of the electrons to jump up a couple of energy levels and so that's what it will do it will not share any of that energy with the other electron so even complicated atoms like uranium which has 92 electrons has a very specific set of absorption and emission lines so let's summarize what we've learned about light and atoms atoms are tiny objects they have a small central nucleus surrounded by an electron cloud or an orbiting electron the number of electrons in each atom varies but however many electrons there are can only reside at very specific energy levels and the electrons prefer to be at as low of energy as possible if a photon with exactly the right energy comes by and that energy has to be the energy difference between two energy levels the electron can absorb it and jump to the higher energy level later the electron will need to release that energy and it does so by releasing a photon with an energy corresponding to the energy jump. These last two points explain how absorption and emission line spectra come to be. If we have a black body, it's producing continuous radiation, and if that light passes through a gas, the atoms will absorb light at the energies corresponding to transitions, and so that light will disappear, leaving a black line, a narrow black line, in the spectrum. And if we are only looking at gas that has been energized and the electrons are up in the upper energy levels, they will drop back down to lower energy levels and release energy as photons at only specific wavelengths, giving us the bright line spectrum or emission line spectrum. Finally, each atom has its own set of energy levels, and so therefore each atom will have its own unique fingerprint, its own unique spectrum, and that's what we can use to determine what objects are made out of. This completes the mini lectures for chapter 4. Please complete the mini lecture response and continue on with the rest of work for the week.